The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. And welcome on this day of Pentecost uh, through this virtual service. We are glad that you have decided or chosen to be with us virtually on this day. And I encourage each of you to remember to uh, follow along with on the, in the service as you are led both in your order of service and or on your monitors. Um, a familiar sight along highways and roadways in the summer is the posting of work zone signs as repairs to streets and bridges during the season of good weather. These signs bring a special level of care and concentration for drivers. For Christian people, the, the church is the work zone of the Holy Spirit. And in the hymn that Luther wrote, paraphrasing the Lord's, uh, the, pardon me, the Apostles' Creed, he writes of the Holy Spirit at work, who the church, his own creation, keeps in unity of spirit, here forgiveness and salvation daily come through Jesus' merit. So dear friends, we are called and we are gathered, and we are assured that we are in the most vital of work, or most vital work zones, the one in which we can give our greatest care and concentration. As we begin our service this morning, uh, again, I do ask that you please turn now and pull to the monitors at the very front for our call to worship message. Once upon a time, there was a great wind, a mighty life-giving energy that breathed everything into existence, a power that moved along the waters of the deep, the Spirit of God. One day, a group who loved God was praying and meeting, celebrating their Jewish feast with friends and family, unaware of what was going to happen. Heaven was about to pay a visit. A violent wind filled the room where they prayed. Tongues of fire descended, separated, and rested on each of them. The Spirit of God didn't just come near them. The Spirit filled them. And each one began to speak in a foreign language, the many languages of all the people who lived in Jerusalem. All those who passed by marveled at what they saw. How could it be that each one could hear their own native language at the same time? Some claimed it was miraculous. Others scoffed and called them drunk. But Peter stepped forward and boldly proclaimed the truth. What the scripture described long ago had now come to pass right before their eyes. I will pour out my spirit, the Lord told his people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Here was the moment. The power of God filled the faithful. The body of Christ rose up alive and active equipped and empowered to love God, to love others. The good news continues to be proclaimed. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the best news is, for those who believe, the story never ends. We sing our opening hymn, O Holy Spirit, Enter In, from our Lutheran Service Built Book 913. Thank you. 
is wonderful. So, how can we know that the fan is working? How do we know that the fan is working? Okay, one way that we know that the fan is working is that I put some piece of paper here on the fan. So if you see, when I turn on the fan, what do you see? You see the stream flying, blowing, whatever it's called, and you see it nicely, no? Okay, so that's one way that we know that the fan is working. Another way that we know that the fan is working is because of the air that blows. You see? If you see it look like this, ah, you feel it. Oh, so good, so nice. You feel the air coming out from the fan. And finally, we know that the fan is working because there is another one, another one. And I hope you could hear it from home. What do you hear? There is a noise. If you pay attention, there is a noise there. Wonderful. Today, it is a special day in the Christian Church. Today, we celebrate Pentecost, the day of Pentecost. The Holy Scripture, the Bible, tell us about the day of Pentecost, where followers of Jesus, or those who were disciples of Jesus, following Jesus, Jesus were gathered in one place. And God sent the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. We worship one God. But God revealed himself in three persons. Father, the creator of everything, including us. Jesus, the redeemer who died for us on the cross. And the Holy Spirit who sustained our faith and sustained the church. Sustained us. And always remind us what is of the earth. So, the Bible says that, that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind coming from heaven. Like this one. You hear it. It's there. The Bible tells us also that they saw what seemed to be flaming tongues of fire that came and rested on their heads. They could not see the Holy Spirit like Jesus, you know, when Jesus presented to themselves and they were able to touch him and eat with, with him and walk with him and everything. But they didn't see the Holy Spirit there. But they knew that the Holy Spirit was there because they could see the flaming tongues of fire. Just as we can see this piece of paper on the fan, like this. And finally, the Bible tells us that they knew that the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel His power. What happened that day? There were people from all, all areas, and they have different languages and dialects. But the Holy Spirit gave the ability to speak to, to the apostles and disciples in their languages. So they were able to communicate with them. So they could feel His power in their life, just as we can feel the air from this fan. We get closer, we feel the air. So, the Holy Spirit is still with us. He's still in the church. And the Holy Spirit has been for 2,000 years sustaining His church, sustaining our faith. We cannot see Him, we cannot see the Holy Spirit unless He wants to reveal Himself. But we don't see Him. But we can hear Him speaking to our hearts. As the Son says, He prints His image in our Holy Spirit coming to us in our heart. 
and all that happened, we were baptized. And he's still there with us. We can see him moving in our life. We can see what God has done through the Holy Spirit in our life. Each of us can see that and realize that yes, the Holy Spirit has been there for us. We can feel the power of his presence as he guides us through each day, as he guides his church till the end of the ages when Jesus comes and take us to be with him in heaven. So, in the meantime, we are never alone. The Holy Spirit is with us. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide and to show us Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross. Help us to listen and obey as he teaches us how to tell others about Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them in the fire of your love. Alleluia. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. With confidence, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. For the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I confess my iniquity, I am sorry for my sin. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear to the voice of my pleas for mercy, O Lord. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In repentance, let us now confess our sins unto our gracious God. You may kneel or be seated. Together we confess. Almighty God, merciful Father, we acknowledge our sinful nature and repent of our sins in thought, word, and deed. And in deed. For the sake of Jesus, our Lord, grant us divine absolution, so that as your redeemed people, we be fed places for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and serve you in time and for eternity. Have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To them that believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Hallelujah. O Lord, how manifold are your works. 
In wisdom have you made all of them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirits, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once caught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this day of Pentecost is taken from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and it can be found in your worship folder as well as on the front monitors behind me. Now this reading from Ezekiel is his vision of the valley of dry bones. And it helps us to know that in Hebrew the same word is used for wind and breath and spirit. The vision said that God would put his spirit in his exiled people and he would restore them. As we listen, remember that the same spirit has given new life to our dry bones. The word of the Lord from Ezekiel the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among, among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, These bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. 
then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be you. to God. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light above me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Our second reading, the epistle, is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, and can be found in our worship folder as well as on the front monitors. Today's epistle is that from the book of Acts, account of the day of Pentecost, when the spirit of power uh, Jesus had promised them descended on the apostles to equip them for their gospel mission. May that same spirit of power descend on us as we hear in Acts 2, 1 through 21. Now when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and vi visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in their own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live and who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see dream visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. 
The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. With the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Please rise. The Holy Gospel for this day of Pentecost is from John's Gospel, from chapters 15 and 16. And as we celebrate today, we rejoice to hear Jesus call the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. He will strengthen us in faith and life. He will be our helper in our work of reaching out to people with the Gospel. And He will be the one to convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Now Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have seen, have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our next hymn, uh, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. You may be seated.
Acts chapter 2, verses 121, which was read by Pastor Shores. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Dear Christian friends, once upon a time, is a phrase used to introduce a narrative of past events, typically in fairy tales and folk tales. But the story of the Bible does not uh, begin with once upon a time. And it is not a fairy tale. It begins with the sentence, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it was not the wicked stepmother who came and messed up our nice lives. But it was Satan who came to the garden with temptation and doubt and sin and death. And Adam and Eve fell into sin. And just as our first parents fell into sin, we are now sinful. And just as Snow White or Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella launched forth and waited for their Prince Charming to come and take them away so that they could live happily ever after, so we wait, you and me, wait for our Savior who has saved us to come and take us to that place where we will live happily ever after, in heaven, in our heavenly Father's mansion, with a seat at the eternal wedding banquet for the bridegroom and his bride, the church. That is the hope of the Christian faith, that when this life, with all of its troubles and hardships, is true, and we close our eyes for the last time, we will be with the Lord. We will be with, with Him to live happily ever after. Are we good Christians, my dear friends in Christ? No, none of us are. None of us are. We never really do as Jesus would have us do. We rebel, we doubt, we are filled with anger, and greed and lust. We are sinners. Jesus, the Savior who came to save us, knows that. A lot of things happen in our life. Some good things, but most certainly a lot of sin. A lot of falling away. A lot of not coming to hear the word of God and receive the sacraments that the Lord gave to His church so that you would not fall away and you would be kept in the true saving faith to life everlasting when you will live happily ever after with the Lord. Today we remember the story of Pentecost in the origin of the Holy Christian Church and the new birth we have in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit's gift of faith. Let us speak a little bit about Pentecost. Back in the days of Moses, God established many feasts. When God established the Passover, He also established a feast called First Fruits. And another feast that came 50 days after First Fruits. The Greek name for this festival is Pentecost which simply means that it comes 50 days later. The ceremonial law required a pilgrimage to the temple for three of the major feasts that God gave to his people. And Pentecost was one of those three. So the rumbling sound that the Holy Spirit made on that particular Pentecost called the entire community of Pentecost pilgrims and the God-fearing residents of Jerusalem to the house where the disciples were gathered. 
As the people drew near to the house, they encountered people who told them who Jesus was and what he had done for their salvation. These people did not speak in the lofty language of the Hebrew of the temple, nor did they speak in the street language of Aramaic or the commercial language of Greek or even the legal language of Latin. But each one heard the story of salvation in his own native language. The language he learned from his mother and father in the home of his childhood. Everyone heard the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection in their own tongue, as though their own mother and father were telling them. Friends, the work of the church is to proclaim the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ to all nations, to all peoples. How? By forcing everyone to learn one language? No. To preach the word of God to everyone in their own language in order to gather God's Sheep from every tribe and nation into Christ's sheepfold, which is the church. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, some were amazed and perplexed. What does this mean? They asked each other. They had never seen or heard anything like this. Rushing wind, fire, tongues of fire, Galilea speaking all these languages and dialects. Some were skeptical and made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Now I do not know about you, but I have never met anyone who learned a new language while drinking wine at nine o'clock in the morning. Usually the more you drink, the more you tend to lose the language you already have. <laughs> the disciples were not filled with fermented spirits, but with the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus had promised to send. Peter stood up along with the other eleven apostles. He said, this is what the prophet Joel was speaking about when he said, in the last days, God's God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit on those days, and they will prophesy. The Lord said, in the last days, this will happen. So Pentecost is the beginning, but it is also the beginning of the end, the first of the last days. We have been in them for almost 2,000 years now. The work of salvation is done, done in Jesus' death on the cross. It is finished. The Lamb who was slain lives, raised to life on the third day. And the risen Lord is glorified, seated at the right hand of God, filling all things with his presence. Dear friends in Christ, you and I are in the last days. Pentecost was the beginning. The last day is the end. We are somewhere in between. Jesus the Savior, who came to save us, knows that a lot can happen between the day of Pentecost and now. He knows that. That is why he sent us his Holy Spirit. And you know, we confess the Holy Spirit often. Every time we confess the creeds, <clears throat> we confess the Holy Spirit. Through God, proceeded from God the Father and God the Son, who call us to faith by the gospel, who enlightens us with his gift, 
who keeps the whole church on earth in the true and saving faith in Jesus Christ to life everlasting. We even confess that we could not believe any of this apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has promised his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit, that the Counselor and Comforter would come. He would protect and defend the church from the work of Satan, who is the accuser and destroyer. The Spirit would give them into all truth and speak only what he hears and tell them what is yet to come. That's how we know that the New Testament scriptures are reliable. They are written by the spirited breath of God. Jesus the Savior, who came to save us, knows that a lot can happen between the day of Pentecost and now. He knows that. That's why he sent us his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps us faithful. The Holy Spirit helps to remain in faith for the rest of our lives. The Holy Spirit gives us strength. And of course we know that he does. For it is the will of God that all people be saved, that none be lost. For that is God's desire. His goal for us, and it is the hope of the Christian faith, that when this life, with all of its troubles and hardships, is through, and we close our eyes for the last time, that we will be with the Lord to live happily ever after. Jesus, the Savior who came to save us, knows that a lot can happen in our life. He knows that. That is why he sent us his Holy Spirit. There is no gimmick to this. There is no fancy programs. There is no magic. The Holy Spirit works through the means that the Lord of the church has given to his church to use to give and strengthen faith. That is the word and sacrament. We trust this gift and our whole church service <clears throat> and liturgy is built around them. The Holy Spirit still works through the Word of God. It is always been that way and it will always be that way. The true sign of the Holy Spirit at work is the proclamation of God's Word. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus who is the God-man who saved us from our sin with his suffering and death on the cross and promises us life everlasting with his resurrection. The Holy Spirit works to God's word when we hear it with our ears, when we read it with our eyes, when we experience that word in the water of holy baptism, and when we receive it with the true body and blood of Jesus in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper. The Holy Spirit is at work when we confess our faith before each other and when we confess our faith before those who do not know Jesus Christ. In today's epistle, the Holy Spirit used light and sound to call the church to hear the proclamation that the Messiah they had been waiting for had come in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. The Holy Spirit transformed the Old Testament church into the New Testament church and the Holy Spirit continues building the New Testament church to this very day. Jesus makes it perfectly clear but there is only one way he builds his church. In the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon on you. He tells his disciples, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's the plan of Jesus. 
you see that it has nothing whatsoever to do with human lead device, mission statements, and mission strategies, or sales campaigns. Rather, it has everything to do with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sent you out, and He is with you into the world, with good news on your lips. The Holy Spirit has come and will remain with us to the very end of the age, opening our eyes of faith and fixing them on Jesus, the author and completer of our faith. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we join now in singing our next hymn, We Praise You, O God. You may rise as we sing. chronically ill and the shut-in, and for all those in need. 
including this day, do we remember Sarah as she continues her recovery from her injuries, for Bill as he prepares for surgery this week, for Ed and Penn as Ed prepares for his treatments, for Gerald and Doreen for strength and encouragement, for Pastor Oscar, Myra, and family for strength and encouragement as well. And we pray for all the frontline workers, the nurses, the medical personnel, the volunteers, and all those who are afflicted with the virus during this pandemic. We pray for Bill and Vicki, Patricia, Sandra, Dennis and Sarah, Doreen, Grace, Nancy, Marcia, Nancy, Mark and Elsie, Maria, Karen, Shirley, Melissa and family, Marg, Frank, Sarah, Alice, Reiner, Jean and Anna, Stacy, Delbert, Al and Ann, Harry, Alice, and Kathleen, and for the, uh, those who we now name in our hearts. Grant that the Holy Spirit move us to be those who live out our gospel callings and deeds of love. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. And bless, we pray you, the nations of the world, that there be times of peace and security. Remember in your grace our schools, hospitals, homes for the aged, and all charitable institutions. Bless those who minister to human need, whether of body, mind, or spirit, and grant them strength and wisdom and love for you and those in their care. Let your blessing rest upon the seed time and harvest, commerce and industry, leisure and the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose toil is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who contribute to the well-being of our society. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. And Father in heaven, be present with your people both near and far, and fill their homes with a spirit of love and peace. In particular, we remember the families of our congregation, including Ian, Stacy, Carly, and Aaron, Alan and Nancy, Rainer, Judy, Ian and Kieran, and Gray, Crystal, Hunter, and Lincoln. Bind them in us all, together by your love, in order that we would draw others to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, of all you continue to provide blessings in the lives of your people, far too numerous to count. Pour your grace, your spirit of grace, upon those recalling special events in their lives this week. We remember today Judy, Jacob, Erica, Marta, Nymut, Sandy, Caleb, and Connie as they celebrate their birthdays, and Harry and Sylvia on their wedding anniversary. Grant them great joy as they recall your many blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, continue to provide us with the gifts of time, treasure, and talents, especially during these challenging times of COVID-19. Enable us to be faithful stewards, giving of ourselves in response to your unending blessings. Help us to trust and believe that we can never outgive your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for all those faithful people whose words and actions have guided us in the past, especially remembering those no longer with us on earth who now share in your eternal presence. By the working of your Holy Spirit, direct us to walk your servant way throughout our lives until that day when we share in the marriage supper of the Lamb and in your glorious presence in heaven. Amen. Amen. And hear us, O Lord, as we remember to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and be with you all. Amen. Amen.
thank you for joining us this morning on this Pentecost Sunday, and we pray that God will pour out his spirit upon each of you as you go forward to share that same message, that message of Jesus and his love for the world around us. Uh, just a couple brief announcements. Again, a reminder that office hours will be held at Faith Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 9 till 12, as well as at Grace and Strathroy on Thursday, and that's from 10 till 2. Yes. So again, just a reminder, and we're, we're letting you know that so that if you wish to call in because you wish to have private communion, by calling in, we can set up a time that is suitable for you, and we would be most happy to do that. So uh, I think those are the only announcements that I have, Pastor. Nothing. Oh, okay. The Lord be with you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.